All right, welcome everyone. My name is Peter, and today we're going to be looking at a very important topic. Um, we mostly already know how to walk, but we're going to specifically be looking at where to put your feet, a methodology I've put together, and I'm going to be drawing a very nice, um, hopefully very detailed diagram for you here today to um, help. I, I personally am a visual learner, so if there are any other visual learners and any other type of learners out there, hopefully this will help you. Um, I'm going to use this blue marker to um, draw and represent things that exist in the real world. Okay, as you walk, it's good to know um, like where each step goes, where you can put your feet. We know, right? One foot after the other. We know that basic part of um, um, walk, walking, um, but there's going to be two other um, fundamental things that are in the back of our minds. Um, first of all, we know step on a crack, break your mother's back. Okay, that is something I'm building off of, but um, cracks are almost down at the bottom of our hierarchy because cracks are often so um, wiggly, squiggly, unpredictable. And because they're not straight lines a lot of the time, they're unsatisfying and therefore unimportant. But they're still there and they're, they're, un, they're still important. They're just less important than straight lines, okay? And then the other thing we're going to be considering is the straight lines that are there and extending those straight lines. All right, so let me start here. So I'm just going to kind of draw a little representation of the road here, and it's not going to be all to scale. But that's all right. So here's a road. And for example, here, uh, you know, you, you walk this way down the road, for example, I, I usually do. And here is maybe the curb. Right. And then sometimes uh, on the curb, there is uh, there's like a gutter type of thing built into it. We'll put that here. All right. Curb and gutter. Nice. And then sometimes, usually in the curb, the way they form it with the concrete, there are usually divisions in the curb which form lines every so often. Right. And these lines are very important because as we walk down the street here, this is usually the perspective that we have. We walk down the street this way. Um, these lines, even if we're not walking on the curb or in the gutter, and I do sometimes walk in the gutter because it's kind of wide, this is where I'm going to draw my first red line. And these red lines are important. All right, you can step on any of these blue or bluish green lines. They don't matter as much. These red lines uh, are the important ones, okay? Here's a red line. Here's a red line. But the important thing here is that it extends out into the road. And I'm doing little dotted lines here because the further away you are from the curb and the gutter, like if you're maybe two or three feet out into the road uh, and you're, it's out of your immediate area, then you don't really have to worry about it. But as you're walking down the street, if you walk down next to a line in the curb or the gutter next to you, you step over it. Don't step on the red line. Even if it's not physically there in the road, you want to step over that, all right? Another feature that might exist, not immediately on the road, but once again next to it, are, uh, at least in the neighborhood I walk through, is there are often driveways. And there, are, for some reason, well, actually, I think it's apparent that they're, they're shaped like this so that there may be easier to pull into and out of onto the road. They're shaped like this, and you might think, once again, we extend the lines, right? And that is that is a good assumption, and you could do it that way, okay? I'm not, I'm not telling you what you need to do, I'm just telling you what I do, which you probably need to do. But in this case, I mirror the driveway lines over the curb. So in this case, these would be mirrored here, like so. Once again, these are the red lines that you don't 
want to step on. So if you're walking along here, step over the red line, step over the red line, keep walking, step over. And once again, if you're walking in the middle of the road, you don't have to worry about this stuff, but there will probably be other stuff that you need to worry about. Driveway, okay? Same thing applies if people have sidewalks going from their houses uh, down to the road. Here's the sidewalk. This one's pretty straightforward. That's right. It goes straight out into the road. So step over, step over, keep walking. Also, if you do want to walk in the gutter, uh, you're gonna wanna step over the seam or the line between the gutter and the rest of the road. Um, partly just for safety because sometimes there's a bit of a lip there and you could roll your ankle. This is looking pretty good so far, pretty simple. Down here on the other side of the road, you can assume there might be a curb here too, but I'm not gonna draw it. Um, I'm gonna draw the top down view of what, uh, this is like a representation of a car, okay? And uh, you know, it doesn't really need to be, look perfect. Like this, is, this might, I, I really shouldn't draw this cause it'll just complicate it and uh, make it look messier. But you know, maybe this is the, the windshield, you know, these are the the windows, etc. right? Just to help you. This is probably just making it look worse, okay, you know. Headlights, I don't even know which end of this car is the front or the back, but this is a car, okay? The important part about the cars uh, that you need to pay attention to is not the front edge or the back edge or the sides or anything, it's the tires, okay? So there might be a tire right here I'm going to emphasize a little bit. There might be a tire right here. And there's probably one right here. I'm drawing them really wide. Probably wider than they really would be unless this is some sort of race car. Here's a car with a tire. And I'm going to draw another car right here, actually. Because I want to show you another example of how they could be. Cars that are parked by the side of the road are a big part of uh, what you might run into. And how you interact with these tires is incredibly important because you're gonna be walking along this way, okay? And then you're gonna walk up closer into the middle of the road and beside them and and then back close to the side. This is how I walk during the day at least. In the, in the at, at nighttime, I just walk right down the middle of the road and once again, I kind of ignore the cars because I'm not close enough to them. Like I said before, there's like a little bubble around you, maybe one, maybe two feet in radius. How the cars affect you is just how they touch, where the, where the tires touch the ground, okay? It's kind of like there's a little square where the tires make contact with the road. Like so, see these little squares here? And then these lines extend outward. But your feet can't fit in this area, so this whole area is kind of a no-no spot. And these are kind of some of the more difficult areas you might interact because you might have to take a slightly bigger step. Out. No-no area. And they also extend backwards behind the car. Like so. Okay, let me draw the tires on this one. For example, uh, here's the tires, the very short car. And sometimes the tires have, are, are canted in the front as they park, right? They can have turned tires. And this affects it also because then the little square where they touch the ground is also turned. That's very important because then these lines go off at an angle. And that's very important to pay attention to. And these lines go off at an angle. Can't step there. 
These ones are still straight though. Of course, these lines extend underneath the car too, but you don't need to worry about those because you can't walk under a car very well, can you? I'm not gonna worry about these except to say that they go out the front at an angle. So these are all the things you need to worry about as you make your way around the vehicles parked by the side of the road. Now there is a hierarchy, like I mentioned, which, which lines on the road you need to worry about most. And by lines on the road, I mean these red lines. Uh, but I'll get into the meaning of that more later as I add more items to the road. One other thing you might find on the road, and this is another thing you might run into more as you walk down the middle of the road, is sometimes there are just square cuts in the middle of the road. And these are pretty satisfying. Uh, now they're even more square than I've drawn them here because they're cut with like diamond blade buzz saws by construction crews as they do uh, various types of ma maintenance on the road, on the water lines or something, right? They're just, I call them square cuts, but they're usually rectangles, but they have square corners. And it's also very satisfying because usually this the corners, the cuts overlap a little bit like this, which help me and help you mentally extend the lines a little bit, right? So obviously you can't step, you can't step on the lines themselves. These are all red. Can't step here, 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 or here, but also these also extend here and here, just as far as you're near them. Right? And another thing that usually accompanies these square cuts is there's usually some sort of little access box in the middle, at least on the roads I've been walking on. I call these W boxes because they have a W in the middle. And of course you can't step on them. These are like little metal boxes they put in there, I guess, to access some sort of valve or something. And of course you can't step uh, on any of this and it's too small to fit your foot in between them. Uh, so I don't, I don't think it usually goes past the edge of the square cut box itself because it, just because of how big they are. It's just out of, out of your range of concern, if you will. So, I mean, these, um, these boxes in the middle of the road are usually very satisfying to walk through just because the lines are so crisp and straight and square. And um, sometimes you might notice that so far, if we see any lines, straight lines anywhere, we just extend them. There are some exceptions to this. For example, um, going along with the, this utility and road worker stuff, sometimes there are bits of spray paint that they spray. Like they might just like, wait, let me do some labeling really quick. Vehicle, vehicle with canted tires, square cuts. W box. So you're starting to notice it all. Start to fill in where you can step, where you can't. It's starting to be like a little puzzle, right? So like I mentioned before, sometimes um, like uh, the utility workers put like little bits of spray paint down, right? They're like, hey, there's something here. Of course, you can't step on that. That's, that's easy. You can't step on any of that. And it extends a little bit too, easy. Spray paint. But sometimes the utility workers will spray arrows. And the arrows are very interesting to me because if they spray an arrow like this, I misspelled it, spray arrow. This is one of the few times when the lines don't keep it extending. And you might think, hey, yeah, Definitely don't step on the end of an arrow, right? But you can actually step on the end of an arrow. Here, maybe not because there's a curb, but in this case, the arrow creates a very nice place for all of these, these lines to conjoin and terminate. So in this case, the lines would just extend outwards from the arrow like this. And every time I draw dotted lines, it's just because they pretty much extend as far as you want them to. Anytime you're pretty much just when you're near them. All right. But you can step on the other side of an arrow, wherever it's pointing to, feel free to step there. 
All right, the next big thing, depending on your road, that you might find uh, all over your road is cracks and cracks that are patched. There's two different types of cracks to me, like um, the cracks that are patched and the ones that aren't. Because the cracks that are patched, uh, I'm gonna, just going to draw some cracks here, you know. Sometimes they're touch, attached to each other, sometimes they're not. Sometimes they're like really um, not straight. Sometimes the cracks just go like straight all the way across the road. To me, the longer and straighter and more consistent a crack is, the more important it is to not step on it, okay? And if it's like this, just a bunch of blobs, then it's not as important. So here, this is more important. This is slightly less important. I'm gonna show it like a dotted line, maybe a dotted line here, a little bit here. If you can fit your foot in there, you know, go for it. But for example, if there was, um, if there was a, a crack here, if there's a bunch of cracks here, and it would make it really difficult to take some steps here without stepping on the cracks, just go ahead and step on the cracks. That's why I'm saying the whole step on a crack, break your mother's back thing uh, is really secondary because the cracks just don't really matter as much. That saying is a, a total urban myth or urban legend or whatever you want to call it. I'll say some of the cracks are, they've been patched with some kind of tar, right? And so they kind of look like this instead. And those are a little bit more concerning, but still, they're still secondary. Just because of their chaotic nature. And we're here, we're more concerned with the order, orderliness of these straight lines that we can just extend. And it's hard to extend uh, these wiggly lines. But if you can, you know, for example, if you're walking along and you can fit your foot right here inside of these as you're walking, that's fine. And uh, as I'm walking, I try to never extend or shorten my stride by more than 50%, okay? I'm not here to be making myself look like an idiot as I walk along. I'm not trying to hop, skip, leap, jump, take huge, you know, ministry of silly walk steps. Uh, and yeah, just um, fit your steps in there as you can. It's kind of like a little puzzle that you solve as you keep walking along. Same thing goes for sticks. Sometimes there's a really nice, satisfying, like a sort a, a assortment of sticks lying around, right? If these three sticks were lying here, it would create a nice, once again, extended set of lines to walk along. But then sometimes there's just like way too many sticks and you can't avoid stepping on them. Just step on them, okay? We're not here to punish ourselves for what's on the road. We're here to enjoy it. Let me label this stuff. Cracks, patched cracks. Sticks. Now, weirdly enough, one of the things that throws me for the biggest loop is manhole covers. And I'm gonna, I'm gonna draw one here, maybe slightly bigger than it actually is, just so it's easier for you to see. Here's a manhole cover. Uh, and at least uh, in my neighborhood, most of the manhole covers, uh, first of all, you can step on these round lines. The rounder lines are, uh, the more okay it is to step on them. But what, what really matters is that the ones in my neighborhood have three circles in them forming a triangle like this okay and that triangle is what's so important do not step on the triangle that is formed by these three lines and also what gives me a lot of trouble is that i can never quite decide in my mind whether these two lines at each corner of the triangle come together for example to create a line that goes straight out right? And should I avoid that line? Or do they each continue on their own like this? So these are two different ways to do it that both work, okay? You have to decide what's right for you. 
because usually what happens to me is I'm about to step between these two lines and it switches and I end up stepping on this line and it's usually pretty unsatisfying to me even though I really like the triangle shape. Um, so the, the manhole covers just give me a lot of trouble and I'm not sure, maybe I'll figure it out one day. I'm thinking, I'm thinking I like this arrangement better, the one line shooting out of the corner of the triangle. manhole either spelled it wrong it's fine now a few things you might have a question about um, basically bottom line is you can do whatever you want like for example some things like a like a mailbox technically a lot of mailboxes overhang the road and you might be thinking hey does that create a line well, to me, it doesn't. <clears throat> Excuse me. To me, it doesn't because no part of the no part of the mailbox actually touches the road. The mailbox post is usually up off the road. Same thing with like um, well, not the same thing, but like a lot a lot of days there's big trash bins. And they are usually kind of rounded. But if I tried to make a line out of these trash bins that are sitting by the side of the road, they would just, it should be too much, right? They're too big. I'll have to take, I'll have to take big goofy strides to get around a trash bin if I turn it into a line. So basically, here's, here's my hierarchy um, for which lines are more important than others, all right? For some reason, car tires are the most important, all right? I will step on every other line before I step on a car tire line. By that, by that I mean these lines coming out right here. And then after that, pretty much all tied in a dead heat is these actual straight cuts, cracks, or seams in the road, like these square cuts. Um, and actually, I'd probably yeah, I'd, I'd probably these square cuts are next most important. And then after that is these extended straight lines, like from W boxes, sidewalks, driveways, manhole, these manhole lines, I've ever figured them out. Straight spray paint's pretty important. And then lowest on the list, once again, are these cracks and squiggly cracks and stuff and sticks. Um, they can be they can still create a really nice rhythm sometimes. Uh, if you if you play it right and you get you can get into a habit of seeing what's coming and kind of pacing and measuring their steps just right. So it can be really cool. And once again, there is a hierarchy within the cracks themselves as some cracks are much, there are some cracks that are almost as straight and satisfying and crisp as uh, man-made cuts. Um, so those would be much higher and more important. Trash can, no, in, no lines, mailbox, no lines. Uh, but yeah, and you'll notice that even the most important lines are often ones that have been extended or are invisible as some might say, but they're not really invisible. They're there. I can label this, uh, where maybe this is maybe more where, where not to put your feet to put your feet when you walk there you go and ultimately what will happen is it all won't be spaced out here perfectly in different sections like the cracks here and the you know this here and that there like in my diagram but it'll all be mixed together and you'll have to figure out your way to to weave weave through it and make decisions of where to put your feet and uh it's kind of fun have any questions let me know i'm sure there's like a million and one things that are on your road on your sidewalks wherever you walk that aren't here that i haven't made examples for but that's where the fun comes in to uh figure it out on your own figure out what you want to step on or step over so thanks for watching see you next time goodbye <laughs>